Welcome to Kent Hans, the best storyteller in Texas podcast. We would love to hear from you. Send email to info at hanspodcast.com. Do you know someone that might make a great guest or a story that you've heard from Chancellor Hans before and would like to hear again? Well, let us know. Drop your email to info at hanspodcast.com. Chancellor Hans, get us started with your saying of the day. To improve is to change. But to be perfect, you got to change a lot. It, you're always changing, and uh, I guess it's okay to try to be perfect, but uh, it's uh, you're not going to reach it. And so uh, just remember, a lot of change, you're trying to move in the right direction. And who said that? That was Winston Churchill. Yeah, you were a big fan of Winston Churchill. Yeah, and, I love Churchill. Did a great know. episode on it. Go back through our library and, and listen yeah, to it. Yeah, we've got some stories on him. One of the, I, I got one email this week from a guy named Binion. I thought maybe I said something bad about Benny Binion, but he wasn't related to him, and you know nobody put a hit out on me. Or anything. <laughs> and uh, I, I, sometime I've I've got a book about Benny Binion. I need to talk about that book. But he was one of the world's great gamblers and did well out in uh, Vegas after they ran him out of Dallas Fort Worth. But uh, this guy who was born in Amarillo at the Air Force Base, and uh, uh, Mr. Binion was uh, a police officer, is retired, uh, was uh, on SWAT team, and and it was it was a pretty long email, but I really enjoyed it, and it, and it was good to hear from. Him. But today, today is April Fool's Day. <laughs> I had forgotten. Me. And uh, you know I've told this before, but I still one of my favorite stories. The George boys were cousins. Uh, my their mother was a Hans, and uh, they had uh, four boys. There was Charlie, Joe, Jackie, Neil, uh, Dub, and uh, One Arm Jimmy. And One Arm Jimmy had been state Golden Gloves champion at one time, and he had two arms at that time. And then he was uh, one of the nephews. Dubby George was playing with the trophy and dropped it, and, and the left arm was broken off. <laughs> And about two weeks later, he was in a wreck, and it chopped off his left arm. And uh, when he came to at the hospital, uh, W's dad, Dub, said, just be glad he didn't knock the head off that trophy. <laughs> and uh, But they they called our house one morning. They lived out in the country, and they called our house one morning and and uh, said that their mother, my, my dad's sister, had died during the night, and that their dad – was so distressed, he got the gun and went down to the barn. And they said, we're not going to have a mama or a daddy. And so that w- we jumped in the car and went over there. It was just me and my mother and dad, my little sister, and and uh, my older sister was already married. And, and we, we got there. We pulled up going about 100 miles an hour and wondered we didn't have a wreck on one of those old dirt roads. And we and when we did, all four of those boys came running around the side of the house saying, "April fool, oh. Uncle Raymond, April fool." My dad pulled it off his belt as he was sprinting <laughs> toward him, trying to whip him. And, and he, his sister said, "Don't don't do anything, those boys. They're just trying to have good, clean fun." Uh, that's a bit. That's going a bit far. Uh, but uh, they they had uh, they got our attention. I'll say that. We, we didn't believe them as much on their April Fool jokes in the, in the uh, future. But uh, I had I had a girl that worked for me in Washington, and she bought, for April Fool, she bought some Oreo cookies, and she'd take, you know, every other one and take off the filling, scrape it off with a knife, and then put toothpaste in there. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, somebody would golly. So I ate one. There wasn't anything wrong with it. it something wrong with you. And, and in one year, she wrapped uh, this one guy that she's friends with, wrapped all of his uh, pencils and everything on his desk. She wrapped it and tied little bows on everything. She, you know, she'd go a long ways to to uh, do a, something that was not as harmful as saying <laughs> mother died and daddy's going to shoot himself. You know, that was a bit. She geared up all year for April first. Oh, she, she did she planned and, and schemed. She one other thing. She'd have post notes, and she'd go in the restroom and put them on the stall doors, so that when you shut the stall and finally got sat down, 
you'd look and there'd a note and she'd have a scribbling on it. You'd be leaning over trying to read the note and everything, you know. And uh, it had to be creative. Well, it's always good to have one person like that in the office that likes to have a little bit of fun, keeps things lighthearted and we, less we, tense. We had one guy that would put an air freshener like you have in your car or something, put an air freshener on somebody's desk, and they'd be, oh, what's smelling in here? <laughs> you know, it, they'd, they'd talk about it all day long. Make sure you uh, pe- go through our past episodes. Uh, there's a lot of great stuff in there, and you can pull it up whenever you want. We release a new episode every Monday morning. Uh, so like and subscribe to the podcast. If you've liked and subscribed and followed before, make sure you do it again uh, because the uh, algorithms have changed. And uh, if you do tap that follow button, then you'll get a notification uh, every Monday that there is a new episode available. Chancellor, did you see this uh, interesting information about getting a bad night's sleep or too bad night's sleep? Yeah, they talk about that. They did a study, and if you have back-to-back bad night's sleep, after that third day, you'll feel four years older. Uh, it might feel 40 years older. <laughs> uh, but that if you get a good night's sleep, you, you can be feeling younger. And, and I, I rarely get anything more than five five hours i should go to bed at about 12 30 and get up 4 30 and and do a little work and then take a nap about six mm-hmm. try to take another nap about one and uh, i'm talking about a 20 to 30 minute nap for those of you listening i have to tell you a little insight here about working with chancellor hans and that is that the phone will ring at any hour. And one time you called me, and uh, I don't know, it was maybe 10.30 or so, and I didn't answer. And you are like, have you already gone to sleep? You yeah, must go to sleep with the chickens. I'm still working. Yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? I have a st- my staff has to, uh, I always tell them, I may call you at any time, uh, but except between 12.30 at night and 4.30 in the morning, I won't call you. <laughs> You're but free. I, I had a guy that worked for me. He's passed away. I did the eulogy to his funeral funeral uh, glenn hunt and i called him one time uh, it's about 2 30 in the morning and I, I just realized that there was a problem that we were working on that had not been finalized so i called him and the next morning i said to him i said i'm sure glad you got that thing done and i apologize for calling you so late but it just worried me i couldn't go to sleep without checking on it. And he said what are you talking about he didn't even remember that I'd called him, and he told me what I wanted to hear, you know, to get me off the line. And uh, so I didn't call him late after that. I did, didn't know what kind of answer I was really going to get. But he got he solved the problem. Yeah, he solved the problem. Even better. You know, speaking of um, feeling older, Judge Judy, I again, I thought of you with this story. She's 81 years old, and she exercises 10 hours a week. And so do you yeah, do yeah, that at I, least. I work out every day. Uh, she's 81. I'm 81. Uh, she's got a big following. She is so popular on her show that they can't replace her. Mm-hmm. And uh, she, she's really good. And she's just tough. You know, people will have a stupid issue or some question. She just gets all over them, and everybody say, well, that's good. That's yeah. good, good that she did. But she works out about 10 hours a week. And her husband, he's 90, and he works out with her. And uh, I always try to do something that is that I can accomplish two goals. One is working out and, and taking care of myself, and the other is maybe making phone calls. If, if I have a, a bunch of phone calls I have not returned, then I'll call while I'm working out. And, uh, and if I'm behind on emails, I'll write a stationary back and uh, do emails. But uh, that that helps me. I feel like I'm not, I'm not wasting any time. Right. And uh, work, working out. If you just, if you start as a young person and do twenty to thirty minutes a day, five or six times a week, uh, you're going to have great results in later years. It, it's it's going to make you a lot better physically. Speaking of judges, we've got it. We got an email from a listener. In Wichita Falls, from Wichita Falls, or Burke Burnett, I can't remember, that recalled an old friend of yours that's a judge that we're talking about. Uh, we're going to have him on as a guest, Judge Frank. Uh, Douthit. Yes, Frank, yes. Frank Douthit was a friend of mine. He's from Henrietta. Henrietta, that's what I knew. And, it was uh, I'm going to try to get him on sometime. He's got some great stories, great storyteller. The average American chancellor spends about 84 hours 
a year working six. That I think that equals about 10 days. I saw that, and uh, that's not good. Uh, said the main reason they they continue to go to work, they don't want, you know, they feel obligated and don't want to look like a slacker and, and afraid that they might get fired or something. But I always tell our people to, you know, be cautious because I don't want them to bring to work what they have and everybody in the office, you know, get sick with the same thing. Uh, there was a, another thing about that study. They studied that people that will decide not to do something, that some event, a party or an event they were going to go to, and they're more likely to not go to something than they are not go to work. Hmm. Work, they're trying to make sure that everybody thinks they're strong and they're, they're doing their job. They're pulling their fair share. On, on events, people will decide to go to an event, and I've done this, where I decide, yeah, I'll speak at that. And then it comes up and you think, oh, no, why did I do that? And uh, so, you know, they'll, so I don't feel good. And, uh, and that will fall by the wayside. But uh, it comes out more than, than uh, you know, 10 or 12 times a year that uh, people will back out of things. If you get uh, 100 people RSV to, RSVP to something, that, that probably means that there's going to be maybe 80 of those people actually show up. That's good to know if you're planning a party or event oh, yeah. or, or whatever you've got trying to get a, a group of people together. And, and also remember this, if you're running for office and you're planning an event, plan it for a location where it will look crowded. If you're expecting 20 people, try to have it someplace that'll hold 15. Why do I have a feeling you learned that lesson the hard way? I learned way? it the hard way. <laughs> you know, I mean, they just have, I, I had an Andrews, Texas one that uh, uh, I had one guy show up, and he was going in to pay his light bill. <laughs> he, 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 he went, I said, is there anyone out in the car? You know, I thought maybe he'd go get somebody out of the car, but he didn't have. His name was Dan Newbro. He's passed on now. But uh, he came to my event, and I had a guy named Gary Gaston was uh, going to introduce me, and finally introduced me. He said, Kent, this is Dan. Dan, this is Kent. Here, one guy <laughs> showed up. But we took him over to the newspaper and got a picture made. And uh, got that picture in the newspaper, and so it looked like we had we had some people there. How we did, did when you were running for Congress? How did your staff get word out that you were doing an event like that? You were having a town hall meeting, or well, just go we, through your database, have, or no? We, we'd have uh, we'd call and uh, get our local coordinator. Mm-hmm. First thing I did when I was running for state senate was find people in different communities, and a lot of them were former students of mine. I had, uh, like in Odessa, I had former students, a uh, bunch of them that, that helped me out. And uh, and then the other thing is call the mayor, call the uh, city councilman, the school board president, call the leaders that are already there and, and see if they'll help you and uh, then uh, set up an event. When you had town hall meetings in, in Congress, uh, they have the franking privilege, and you can send a postcard to everyone that lives in a certain county. Hmm. And uh, I think when Reagan was first elected president, I had over 400 people show up uh, to a town hall meeting in Lubbock. And uh, they they wanted to know if I was going to support him on his mm-hmm. tax cut. And I said, the, I told this guy, the bill's name, the Connable Hans Act. <laughs> I mean, he said, well, I didn't know what his name, but I just know, are you for it? Now, yes, I'm for my own bill. And I guess when you have, see, so you have 400 people there, you don't know if that's 400 people that are like you or 400 that don't or 200 that do, 200 that don't. You, you really don't know. One thing about having town hall meetings, you'll get a feel of where the public is. Uh, you, you may have some that will show up that are on the fringe and uh, that little unusual to deal with, but with the with the general public, you get a pretty good feel. You, you whether it's have, hostile or whether it's yeah, yeah, or you know what you get onto one subject, and all of a sudden you look out there and there's 15 people, you know, got their arms up that mm-hmm. want to talk about it, and uh, that's a big issue. But uh, you'll you'll figure those out pretty fast. Going back to your, if you don't mind, your your time in Congress, time in state senate. What do you miss about those things? I mean, there's probably well, I, the only thing I'd miss of putting a deal together. 
Mm -hmm. You know, I always enjoyed that tax cut and see if we could pick up the guys from Michigan and, and you know, how can we get the Michigan delegation to vote with us and, and, uh, what, what's it going to take to get the guy, people from, you know, men and women from the Northeast. That Michigan delegation, that really turned out well. Turned out well. We we had agreed to help them on the Chrysler bailout where the government wound up making $265 million. Mm -hmm. And that part of it turned out well. <laughs> One of the few times the government's ever made any money. <laughs> and then then uh, uh, we we got the Michigan delegation to most of them. We may have missed one or two to vote to do away with the windfall profits tax uh, on stripper oil wells, mm -hmm. and so which was big for West Texas and East Texas, especially East Texas and along the coast where they had smaller oil wells. You know, the big story last week, of course, happened in Baltimore, and that was that, that the Francis the bridge. Scott Key Bridge collapsing, being hit by a, a shipping, a container ship, and It collapsing. lost its power, and they could they could move it, and it ran into the uh, supports, and, and, and there were six people killed that were construction workers. You know, I feel so badly about that that anybody loses their life. But these guys are having to work at night, mm -hmm. you know, and they're fixing potholes and they're up there and, and, uh, and it, it just falls apart and their life's over. So it's kind of a sad, sad situation. I, I went back and looked at bridges, you know, the, the, the little nursery rhyme, London bridge is falling down. It did fall down one mm -hmm. time, but one of the biggest was in Portugal where 4,000 people were killed. And the French had invaded, and they had bayonets uh, in their rifles and were marching to this town, and everybody fled the scene. They went to this one bridge to get across this river, and so many got on the bridge and fell and uh, killed a bunch of people. But there, there's every four or five years in the United States there'll be some bridge accident. There was one on uh, Interstate 40, uh, between uh, Oklahoma and Arkansas. And then a few years ago, there's one in Minneapolis. People just driving along in, in I-35. It just fell out from under them. And uh, it happens. The infrastructure, government, they've got to provide safety and everything. But biggest thing they can always do, they need to make sure the infrastructure is sound uh, in roadways or, or anything else that, in control of and the big one that changed the way that the the rules about bridges was in tampa when that bridge collapsed and then they had to make barriers around the the structured part the part that holds the bridge up had to have barriers around it to stop a ship well they didn't have barriers it, it was foggy mm -hmm. it, it was you couldn't see at all and the ship was coming in and hit the the uh, enforcement part of the bridge and uh, the foundation, and it, it brought the bridge down. Yeah. A tough deal. I mean, you can imagine the panic that goes through those people's minds is just they're free falling in the car. Last night I tried to watch a movie, and I got about 20 minutes into it, and I just couldn't watch it anymore. And I was wondering, you're not a big movie goer, but have you ever walked out of a movie? I have. Uh, a friend of mine that, that worked for me in Washington, Jim Rock, he was, I, I was with him. We had lunch and I said, you know, my wife, Susie wants me to take her to a movie. And he said, I, I can tell you a good movie. Just saw it. Just came out and uh, it's called Mean Girls. <laughs> I said, that doesn't sound like something I'd want to. No, it's a good movie. And I'm trying to think that there was some young actress that was always in trouble that was in the movie. Lindsay Lohan. Lindsay Lohan. So I take Susie and we go to the movie. And, and we do this often, about once every two or three years. We go to a movie. <laughs> and uh, the movie got started, Mean Girls. It was about these junior high girls that were mean to each other. It was just stupid. <laughs> and so I said, I'm leaving. i come back and get you. You can call me or, or you know, you can go with me. And she, Whatever you're leaving, I'm leaving. So I went back there, and I said, that's a stupid movie. I want my money back. <laughs> it made you think a whole lot less of the guy that yeah. recommended it, didn't it? Yeah. You know, I said, Jim, uh, you know, I'm not going to ask you for recommendations on movies. And uh, I, I went back to the box there and told them I want my money back, and they gave me my money, money back. They did? Yeah. I mean, they just, I, I just watched about 15, 20 minutes of it. Yeah. And so uh, 
They gave me a refund. You hadn't even been there long enough to finish your popcorn. Well, I didn't. That popcorn, boy, it's deadly. <laughs> you know, the, I think cardiologists on the pop, popcorn machines at the, <laughs> at the movies, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's really deadly. It is. All that butter and oh, salt. Oh, butter, and it's it, good. Yeah, it's good. It, it is good. Uh, some uh, officials in Northeast Washington got an interesting phone call this yeah, week. Yeah, th- this was a call. Some guy called the police in the northeast part of Washington, said he was coming out there and that he was a hunter and that he was he was going to be looking for Sasquatch. <laughs> he was going to shoot him. And they said, what? He said, he's going to shoot Sasquatch. You found, but only the male. He wouldn't <laughs> shoot a female. You know, I mean, the guy shouldn't have a gun uh, if, if he's that crazy. Yeah. They they told him just be careful, you know. I mean they they thought this this is a real nut. He wanted to know if he needed a license. Yeah, well, no. Do you yeah. have to have a license if you're going to shoot Sasquatch? Do you have to have a license? Look, I would tell you if you live in Northeast Washington, uh, out in that beautiful countryside, and and you hadn't shaved in a long time, you got bushy hair and everything. I, I wouldn't go out walking around, you know, while that guy's <laughs> going to be in the community. I agree. Something else that was in the news this week, and we've we've talked about student debt before, but there's a woman, I believe, in Illinois that has a real story. I mean, she had she's 71, and she had a debt of 107 thousand mm-hmm. uh, dollars. You you know, uh, uh, Biden uh, had was forgiving people of the debt, and courts ruled you couldn't, and then he came back and tried it again, and and. Uh, a lot of people, especially people that decided not to go to college, that they they wanted to be an electrician or plumber or some skilled labor, uh, which is very admirable, why should they have to pay off somebody's debt to went to college? And uh, so, I mean, that's that's a big debate, and it'll be a debate during the election. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, if I had a student loan that hadn't been paid off, I'd probably be happy if they were going to pay it off. But is that uh, is that proper in the big picture? Yeah, when you have that big of a loan, this woman was a school teacher. I mean, she's never going to make enough money to well, pay it we off. We had uh, the Wall Street Journal had an uh, article about student debt, and there was one student uh, owed one hundred and forty seven thousand dollars going to a private school, mm. uh, church related school in Texas, where the tuition is uh, above sixty thousand uh, a year, and so. And she wants to teach third graders. She yeah. can't make enough money to pay the interest on that debt. Yeah. Admirable that you want to go teach third graders, but do you need to go to a really expensive school to do that? Hey, you need to go to Angelo State and, <laughs> and get a, a car scholarship. Yeah. Uh, they have, a, there was family down there gave their ranch and all the mineral interest on the ranch. And uh, somebody, I think, was probably drilling for water and they hit oil. And, uh, when I left uh, as chancellor at Texas Tech, uh, the Car Foundation at Angelo State had $180 million in it. And if you have a, a – there was a young couple. I saw an event in uh, uh, Austin, and they had Angelo State T-shirts on. I asked them where they are from. They were from Houston. I said, how would you select Angelo State? And they said, because of the car scholarships. And uh, that they were able to go, and they were uh, in education. He's going to be teaching history, and she was going to be teaching elementary education. And they got out without any debt. That's and great. they were first generation. Nobody in their family has ever been to college. And if you want to go to college, there are different deals in different places. You can do it if you want to. And and I know there's there's junior colleges that have deals with senior colleges, like Texas Tech and McLennan. Uh, junior college, a uh, community college in Waco, have it that you can go to the junior college and then go to Texas Tech at at the campus in McLennan and uh, and graduate from Texas Tech without ever having gone to Lubbock. And uh, there, are, if you want an education, you can talk to somebody at any college, and they they can give you some guidance mm-hmm. and ask questions. Uh, make sure that you know that you know. Uh, how much an elementary education teacher makes if you're going to borrow $147,000 to go to a private church school. 
They've got some great programs in high schools now, too, where you can, when you finish high dual school, credit. you get an associate's degree Yeah, when, and, by the time you finish. And you have dual credit mm-hmm. degrees where where you can get credit for your high school and, and uh, credit longer. I had a, a relative one time that uh, went to Texas Tech, and he uh, uh, one of his cousins came in two years later and within a year had lapped him. Uh, he, he was having a good time and, you know, got laughed well i spoke with your wife when i got here and she told me that uh, the the university of houston going down in the tournament to duke busted her bracket i'm curious how yours is yeah well my bracket i've still got uh a yukon mm-hmm. and still got purdue oh. so i've got two good ones but you know i felt sorry for the houston fans the cougars that the best player maybe the best player in basketball if not even one of the top five is an all-american uh, from right here in Austin, from uh, Maynard, Texas, uh, Jamal Shedd, and he uh, turned his ankle, and that, and they showed the replay, and it was a bad turn. And when I saw him coming out the second half, he was on one of those, you know, little wheel deals for when you have a bad knee or a bad leg. I knew they, they probably weren't going to win. They still had a good game, uh, played within three uh, even though they they got beat, and even though they didn't have their best player, there's in North Carolina State. You know, it was pretty hot, and I, I hadn't been able, uh, didn't have time to check it last night. But they uh, they they had won about seven in a row after losing their last four games of the season. But it's always fun to see who you've got, and and people say, well, my bracket didn't even ma- make it past the first round. Well, you shouldn't have picked McNeese State to go to the Final Four. You know, as I always tell them that. Uh, you want to wrap up the uh, the day with the, your saying of the day? To improve is to change. And if you're trying to be perfect, you're going to change a lot. So send, be careful. Send us your email. It is um, uh, info at hantspodcast.com. And follow us on Instagram at Best Storyteller Podcast. One last thing. I've got several people who have sent me questions about something I said. And I'm still working those. I forget about them until the next time I'm recording something. So I'm still working on them. Don't give up on me. And I'll remind them, too. Good. I'll remind you to get after it. Have a great day.